Welcome back to another episode from Checking From Behind You Beauties. Thank you guys for being here. I'm Zach, joined by Preston. And today we have a special guest, Mug. Hopefully we can bring you guys these episodes every single Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. First off, to start off the episode, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing good, Not yeah. Bad. Yeah, can't complain. It's night, nice night here in, in the Buffalo area. Nice, what's that? It's been like 70 60, degrees outside yeah, it's been right 60, now. 60, 70 degrees the past few days. I love October. it. I love it. Can't complain too much. And I'm in Edmonton. It's freezing here. It's always freezing in Edmonton. <laughs> 365 days a year. Speaking of Edmonton, your boy, Connor McDavid, suffered a lower body injury a few nights ago. Is out two to three weeks. What I heard is that he avoided the disaster. The Oilers avoided the disaster. This could have been a lot worse than what he is right now. And the Oilers skidding two cannot afford the best player in the world to go out. Now you're going to need some guys to step up. Leon Dreisaitl, Bouchard, Nugent Hopkins, the list goes on. Zach Hyman is struggling right now. You're going to need him to step up too. Does he still have zero goals at the moment? Yes, he has zero yep. goals, yeah. Yep. You need him to been... pop. <laughs> <sighs> I, man, there's no words to describe how that man has been playing. Like, you you watch him play, and it's like, okay, you're working hard. You're actually, like, playing decent hockey. You still have the speed that you somehow have when your stride sucks. But I don't – like, he just – he doesn't do much right now. Like, he has one assist, I think. He's mm-hmm. looked pretty bad on the power play. And his defensive game's always been good. But you got to start producing. Like, how do you go from scoring 54, 53 or 54 goals last season to having zilch? In the first ten games, especially and you're playing with, with Connor like, McDavid. Yeah, especially with Connor McDavid. I mean, like I, I don't get it, man. I just, I am dumbfounded by how bad he's looked. Like, well, I, mean, I think just how, to, looking at the Oilers roster yeah. across the board, it looks like the scoring's been significantly down. Like, I mean, like it's Leon and, it's and Cot McDavid are like both at ten points and ten point in, in ten games, but like for them, that's average. Like that's not anything special for those two. For them, it's average. Yeah, I was talking yeah. to my buddy about that. It's like <laughs> you think about it. McDavid at one point had over two points per game to start every season, and this year it's like, well, it's okay. Like it's good. Point per game is really good in the NHL, yeah. but like it's, for, we know you can do better. So. For him, he needs what sixteen points, seventeen points right now. It's like oh, he's having a really good season. Anything under like fourteen points at this point through ten games, you're like, eh, it's okay. Like, that's the yeah. standard that we hold them to. And, like, the rest of the team, like, outside of three guys, they're not producing anything offensively. And this coming into the season, everybody was raving about this team is going to put up goals at will. We saw it in the playoffs half the time. We saw it all of last season. Their power play was at an oh, historic a free goal. Yeah. pace. Yeah, a free goal. Yeah. So now you come in to this season – not really producing outside of two or three guys. McDavid's out two to three weeks. You need your guys to step up. Zach Hyman does not look anything close to the 50 goal score right now. Like legitimately, if he got 20 goals, that would be a horrible season for this guy. Like he needs to step up. You bring in Jeff Skinner, who sure hasn't looked particularly like a the goal scorer you brought him into, but this is the role where now. Jeff Skinner, Victor Arvinson, we brought you guys in to score. If Victor Arvinson can keep staying on the ice instead of being hurt like he was with L.A. and previous teams, like, he'll be fine. Jeff Skinner has scored 40 goals, I believe, five or six times in his career. Now, I'm not telling Jeff Skinner that he needs to go out and score 40, 50 goals with the Oilers, but become that goal scorer that he's been with in his entire career. And this is a spot where you're going to need guys to step up. And if guys can step up and McDavid's act, absence and hover around 500 you get McDavid back you get your captain back your superstar best player in the league the locker room gets rejuvenated right you have that juice and it's like all right we hung in there we hung around 500 let's go win five six straight games now they're not going to go out and win what was it like 18 straight games that they did last season on one point but I mean you're going to have to string together a five, six game winning streak at one point, whether it's now or whether it's down the line at some point, if you want to be that top Pacific contender that everybody's expecting you to. And like you look at the Pacific, Vegas lost six pieces. They're currently 7-2 and 1, 15 points, 10 games played. LA is second place with 12 points, Vancouver. And then you have Calgary in front of you and CF. So Edmonton right now is sitting in seventh place. They have nine points in 10 games. It's not good enough. I know it's only 10 games. I don't want to overreact about this team. But again, you're coming off 
A beautiful Stanley Cup run in which you were down 3-0, come back, lose 2-1 in Game 7. You were on the brink of making history, and McDavid and Dreisaitl get in their first cup. And now you're coming into this season, and you're kind of laying an egg. Now, could it be a cup hangover? Sure, okay. But you look at the other side, though. It's like Florida, they're having no problem. They've been to the finals back-to-back -back seasons. So I don't know if it's a skill issue. I don't know if it's a coaching thing. It could be a combination of both. Who knows? But they just need to get their head out of their ass and start playing like they're the best team in the West. I mean, there's definitely a lot of pressure on them right now, of course, you know, because they they were one game away from winning the Stanley Cup last, last year. I thought they had a pretty solid offseason, all things considered, you know, added some good secondary scoring, you know. They come out flat like this is our season. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like, it's unacceptable right now with the way the Oilers are playing. I mean, they got blown out by Columbus. You know, I know McDavid gets hurt in that game, but there's no reason why you should be getting blown out by Columbus. You know, and credit to Columbus. They're, they're playing a lot better than I thought they'd be. And they're playing hard right now, but you can't get shut out to a team by like Columbus. Like, no, there's no excuse. That that game was tough to watch too, because it's like Columbus goes up one nothing. Okay, bad bounce. We were playing better than Columbus up to that point. McDavid goes down. I get that that hurts. You're seeing your best player go down. That sucks. It hurts the team mentally. I get that. But then it's two nothing. Then it's three nothing. Then it's four nothing. And it's like, what are we doing? Like we looked terrible after that first goal. We were out, like I said, we were out playing them with McDavid hurt. We still looked like the better team. But then all of a sudden we just weren't. And it just made no sense. Like Skinner hasn't been great. The depth has been playing terrible. We don't have the defensive depth we need. I don't know. It's 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 a combination of a lot of things, like it was last season. So I'm really just hoping it when even if McDavid comes back and then they start playing well, it'd still be fine, but they need to just turn it around as soon as possible. I mean, like it's still realistic for them to like have a decent chance to make the playoffs. I mean, like look just looking at the Western Conference, it's kind of it's it's ten games in the season. Like you don't have to panic too much, but players gotta step up on McDavid being gone for two or three weeks. Leon Dreisel has to play better. You know, Zach Hyman, we touched talking about him a little bit. He he needs to play with no goals. You know, after scoring 50 plus last year, no goals through 10 games. You know, I, I'm just looking at their stats for their team, there are. There are. Do, 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 I won't let me celebrate goals. There are three players with three or more goals right now. And there are about nine players that haven't scored a goal yet Listen, on, that, in the, okay. on their forward core. I'm going to switch it over to goaltending real quick because you're supposed to be star goaltender Stuart Skinner is fourth worst in the entire league in goals saved above expected negative 4.7 and for you listeners or viewers that are watching that aren't really into the analytics they're they're not getting a stop from Stuart Skinner when they need to and he's allowing basically five goals the entire season that he should have stopped and then Calvin Pickard Sure, he's a little bit down the list, but he's still at negative one and a half. He's at, yeah, negative 1.5. I mean, he, he's a backup. So. And well, it doesn't matter, though. You still need to get a save, like, from your goaltenders from time to time. Like, sure, he's a backup. Like, you're not expecting him to play lights out. But it's more of a knock on Stuart Skinner. Now, I'm not saying he can't turn it around. I'm not saying that he, this is going to continue the entire season. But what I'm saying is, listen, okay, you can turn it around at some point. And the reason that I won't be so worried about the Oilers because all you have to do is get into the playoffs. I know we're only 10, 11 games in, but all you have to do is get in and anything can happen. And I get like the expectations are through the roof after last season. But listen, even if they get in, if they somehow drop to a wild card team, they get in, they could rattle off like three straight series wins and end up back in the cup finals. Like as long as you get in, that's all that matters. So right now I'm not worried, especially with Connor McDavid out two to three weeks and then he'll be back in, in hopefully a month. So let's say come January, February, if they're still hovering just around 500 and they're like six, seven, eight points out, then we can panic. But right now, I'm going to kind of chill a little bit and just see what's going to unfold for them the next couple months. Well, I think if like the first couple weeks, like without McDavid and they're still losing, like, like they have been, then you panic. No, cause... I'm not panicking if they're like losing like this after McDavid. David. If McDavid comes back and it's two weeks in and they're still doing like this, I'll panic then. I'll panic. Well, that's what I just what said. I no, I thought you said that if they're losing even when he's gone. Unless well, I, miss... I said like two weeks and McDavid comes back and they're like they're still playing like garbage and like they didn't like really win or maybe win like one game with McDavid, one or two games with McDavid gone. Yeah, you panic. Okay, all right. I misunderstood you. I thought you meant when he was out of the lineup. That's my bad. 
Well, I mean, I, I'm assuming I, they, that's what I said. I was saying earlier, like other players got to step up. McDavid's gone. Dry side all. They're paying you fourteen million dollars a year next year. Got to play like it. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I think the panic button will get hit if while McDavid's out, they lose like four or five straight. Like if we lose in Nashville, and then we lose our. I think it's the Flames and the Devils after that. I could be wrong, but if we lose, like say three or four in a row here, panic button gets hit somebody gets moved or somebody gets brought in and we take a swing. Right. So only if we start to like see the fourth, four in a row, like three losses in a row, four in a row, maybe five in a row, they're going to have to go. Okay. We have to make a move here because we just went to the finals. We're now four and nine, four and 10. Right. So there, I think Bowman would be smart enough to realize that he needs to make a move early if they're still struggling. And then like, yeah, if McDavid comes back and they're just terrible, there will be some hefty panic. And uh, just quickly before I stop that, there's there's a comment I made about Stuart Skinner a little while ago getting that massive contract extension. If he keeps playing this way, he ain't getting even close to that. <laughs> he is not even going to come near that right now. Like he doesn't deserve it at all. I mean, he might not even get not even get a contract by the Oilers at all. <laughs> the way he's playing, no way. Might say yeah. screw it and just be like. You can go find another team. We're not interested. We'll get another goaltender. We'll bring back Jack Campbell. How about... Oh, God. <laughs> How about them San Jose Sharks? They've won two straight games. It feels like for the first time in forever. Oh. Dude. But that comeback against Utah, I, I will say, it was kind of electric. I wasn't watching oh, that Oh, shit. Game. They're making the playoffs. Dude. Four, what was it? Four goals in the last, like, five minutes of the game in overtime That's to win my, it? I think this says more about Utah than San Jose. Dude, dude, we'll get to Utah in a yeah. second because there's some stuff that I want to bring up with them. But San Jose, man, like, okay, first off, playoff team. I love the sarcasm, by the way. That's a comment that I would make. I love it. <laughs> They're winning the cup. Oh, yeah. Celebrini. Yeah, he's going to win the heart, too. Even though he's oh, still hurt. And listen, they're doing this with Dallas Celebrity in the lineup. I, Mikhail Granlin is playing beautiful hockey. Fabian Zetterlin has turned his career around too. Like, no, 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 it's not. I'm not even joking. Like, Zetterlin is playing good hockey right now. Granlin right now is, is over what? A, at like 90 something point pace, too. Let's see if he keeps that up. Well, I, he's not going to keep it up, but I'm saying like he's <laughs> they're playing some of the best hockey of their careers in San Jose. Like I, mean, I don't. They're, 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 they're also. They're good. But here's here's the thing that you might like kind of be forgetting. They're still two seven and two, and their team is still terrible. Like there's some good players on that team. They're like not a fully boring team to watch anymore. Like with Jake Wallman, and they just grabbed Timothy Liljegren like a few hours ago. So like their team is like oh like they're okay to watch, but they'll be lucky to win twenty games again. Like they're not great at all. Yes, they got two wins. Yes, they got two in a row. Yes, they had the cool comeback against Utah, but that team is just not it at all. Like, at the deadline, they're going to sell everything again, and they're going to look even worse. And Celebrini and Smith and Musty, these guys are going to help them in the future, but this team is going to go – this team is going to struggle for a while. Yeah, They are on the right track, though, of getting things done. I'm not going to say it's soon, okay? Like, it's going to take a few years. I'm not saying, like, in two years they're going to be this juggernaut that's going to go out there and kill everybody. No, but it's it's going to be a yearly No, thing, but, but in two on... years, there might be a playoff team. Two – ooh. It, it's... Might. Keyword is might. You know what? Yeah, Keyword they could be – well, Yeah, their prospects they develop. They could they're be going in over Utah the top shoes. Three, probably a top three pick again this year. So, if they hit on that pick – you know, Askarov ends up being a good goalie. Yeah, they could be in that conversation in two years. And they get James Haggins too, bro. My God. If James Haggins paired all the ready in the top six, and then you throw in Askarov, who I'm assuming is going to be a full time NHLer next season. I'm assuming that we're going to see Askarov at some point this season. Don't know when. Probably. Um, I would love that. When they trade Blackwood. Yes, at some point. Um, I love that. San Jose, San Jose is becoming a team that actually is – like, it's kind of fun to watch to me at least. Um, now, I'm not – like, this roster should – okay, I don't want to gas them up too much more before we move on. But this, They've allowed 45 goals this year already. Holy shit. They've allowed the most goals in the league, and oh, no. it's not – has allowed close. the most goals in the league, actually. Hmm? Pittsburgh oh, yeah. The Penguins have allowed 48. Mm, yeah, yeah, San Jose's allowed 45. So second middle school is in the league. Sorry, guys. 
Pittsburgh's not doing too great either. Okay. Um, they have scored more goals than the Edmonton sh- Oilers, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, had That's to bring that funny. up. Hey? Had to throw the stray in there. Edmonton eh? is <laughs> – listen, they're scoring 2.2 goals a game. That's a lot. Okay. I mean, no. just play lockdown <laughs> defense. Stuart Skinner allows one goal a game. They're good. If Stuart Skinner can go out there and put up a 940 save percentage every night, I think you guys are okay. How about Utah, though? They're dealing with a lot of injuries. John Marino is out long term. Uh, you have Dursey, who's out long term as well. Um, at this hurt. point, they were on a playoff bubble for me. I didn't have them making. I had them six in the Pacific, but uh, this drops them down the list a little bit, a lot. Um, I mean, you look at them up and down. Like, sure, you blow that game to to San Jose. You after starting three and zero, you're one four and two, I believe it is. Um, you're not looking so great. Like, listen, this team is struggling without those two defensemen. Those are two guys that you look at the rosters like you guys can't be out for long term. Like, sure, injuries happen all the time. If they're out for maybe a couple weeks, a month, whatever, like not a huge deal. But these guys are out three to four months, five to six months. Like. You can't have that, and on top of it, you're having really subpar goaltending right now with Ingram and Vimelka. Now, granted, I'm not expecting them to put up, like light the stat sheet up with the goals against average and save percentage, especially playing behind that defense. Like they're still a fun team to watch, but at this point, though, like it's going you got they're gonna have to fight. And they're gonna have to scratch and claw their way to even be in the wild card two conversation at this point. I mean, I don't. I didn't think going into the season they were a playoff team. I thought maybe they could, you know, be compete. You know, looking at my standings predictions, I forgot about these. I had them seventh in the, in the Central. I don't know if they'll be that bad, but I don't know. The only team I have worse than them is Chicago. But I, losing Jersey and Marino hurts like that. Badly. Those are, I mean, especially That's, for long term. Like those are yeah. two of their top three defensemen there. And I know Sergeant has yeah. been pretty good for them, but. Yeah, no, yeah, losing those two guys. So much. Yeah, losing those two guys for long term hurts. And you know, when you're having oh, not man. great goaltending and losing two of your best defensemen, it's gonna be hard to keep the puck out of your net. Yeah, it is. And I mean, they started really well. Like mm-hmm. you look at Dylan Gunther, you look at how Logan Cooley was playing, those two look like they could put up at least at the beginning of the year. I know everyone looks into it a little much, but those two look like they could actually have like breakout 60, 70 mm-hmm. point seasons, maybe more. And they've both just kind of been quiet in the last few games, right? I so mean, um they're still good. Like I'm not saying that they've been playing bad because they haven't, but the Utah, like they, they just haven't looked great. And yes, the injuries hurt. They went out and grabbed Olimata. They went out and fixed their uh, defensive issue temporarily. At least I don't think he can be a long-term fix by any no, means. No, but... I mean, he'll, yeah, he could, you can just plug him and play him for a couple months. Yeah. Plug him for a bit. He's a guy that's in the NHL. You can trust him to actually play some minutes. That's a, it's a solid pickup by them. Yeah, I'm glad they reacted to it though, and just didn't like just deal with it. They just like let's just yeah, bring in a like, guy, like to stop the bleeding a little bit for now. Which that's yeah, a good I, I know that, I know there was 100. percent I know there was a bit of a, a bit of a rumor going around there that they might just say no, we're not going to go spend because we need to spend. We are just going to kind of hope that it plays itself out, and when it stopped working, <laughs> and they're like, okay, we're losing, let's go make a move here. Maybe it'll work. Maybe model will be that guy that actually stabilizes the defensive depth for a little bit, and then until they come back but they have a long time until that. Like those guys are out for a while. Those are some major injuries. So yeah, it's uh, it'll be, it'll be tough to see. I would, and this is just like a hot take. I have no reports or anything on this, but I would wa- I wonder if they go and make another move. Like if there's another defenseman out there, that's not going to break the bank. I'm curious if they'd go take a look because what do you have to lose? Like you bring in Mata. It's a, it was cheap acquisition, right? You bring in Mata, you plug him into the lineup. If you're still losing and your defensive depth still doesn't look great, why not go like say, hey, we've got a fourth and a fifth round pick we're willing to play with. What can we get? What seventh or sixth or seventh defenseman can we get that we can plug into our lineup temporarily and then maybe flip him at the deadline or maybe he can just be a seventh defenseman all year? Is there someone out there that like that makes sense to acquire them for i don't know like they I mean, have to, I'm, I'm sure have to there's someone out there that they could talk to i don't, I don't know if necessarily it's worth just you know because I, I think they're, they're not a playoff team the writing's on the wall and mm-hmm. i know they have like a ton of prospects i don't know if it's just worth you're trading more picks now you, you know you're breeding them out of that was a third round pick right i think it was yeah it was a third but not not a bad you gotta remember they have a lot of picks though like they have a ton of picks yeah i mean they have three like, second round picks next year um, all right I think, 
they traded um, the third round pick. They have two first third round picks this year too. So yeah. I mean, they have so a third round pick to burn. It, That's honestly a pretty yeah. solid return for Mata. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. But, it is. I, I don't know if you want to keep just trading away picks just for like temporary guys, especially just it, for like it, I think it a, depends. A I bottom, think, like, I think it depends. below average team. Like I don't know. Yeah. Maybe if they're fighting for a playoffs, but yeah, definitely bringing guys. You know, you have a young team. It's just worth it just to get that experience. Listen, okay, it depends. One guy that comes to mind. I don't know exactly what he'd be worth. If Calgary falters, you call Calgary and talk to him about Rasmus Anderson. And yeah, that's the first name that came to my mind too. And. Alan Mitchell, he writes for the Athletic. He's the one that said like the Oilers were interested, but it just wouldn't make sense because obviously the provincial well, rivalry yeah. there. Well, I might be a little pricey, but for the trade, yeah. And but that's Ryan the thing Smith too, will do is anything like, to win at this point. Like we we've we've seen that's him the other do thing, it in the off like, season. Like he went out, he got so, Sergeant, he there's got so many factors into this. There's so more fact. There's so many factors that go into this Utah team because this Utah team is actually fun to watch, and it's ryan smith even said we're willing to spend we want to spend we want to win now and so he wants to make the playoffs this year so i wonder even if they start to struggle even if they're not like in a playoff spot come trade deadline and they're like three or four points out he will swing and i think he'll swing for the fences he's got those picks rasmus anderson does make perfect sense now obviously you'll have you might get an overabundance of demon at that point but that's a good problem to have I yeah I, 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 uh, Utah's in an interesting situation. I know that like it's a new market, so like the best way to get fans win fans over right away is just to win. I mean that worked with Vegas. Like 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 they have a pretty big solid fan base now. Like that that's a really great way to build a fan base in a, in a new market. And you know they have a really great young forward core. And they, it's just I I don't know if they can make that push to the playoffs either. Just with that the young all those young forwards but that they have. Even if like let's say they don't make the push to the playoffs, right? We brought up Rasmus Anderson. He has after this season, he has one more year left at four point five five million dollars. Yeah, I think UFA. that's a good move just in general. Mm-hmm. You know, you have your top four being you know Sergachev, Dersey, Marino, and Anderson. That's, that's really great. Good. It's good. Like or it, even it, or if you even have the draft good. capital do even if you have to trade like a couple seconds, I think that's that might be worth it just for that future. You know, that's that's a really, really, really good top four if you could extend Anderson. And, and like you know, we're willing to spend the money. Even if it's not Anderson, like bolstering that top four would be nice. Or like you guys have brought up, like just get into the defenseman just as like a placeholder for the rest of the season. Um, yeah. I want to plan essentially. Basically. Um, I want an overreaction or underreaction from you guys right now. The Winnipeg Jets are the best NHL team. Overreaction. Yep. I agree. Overreaction. Mm. I still, I, I, I think the best two teams in the NHL right now are the Florida Panthers and the New York Rangers. I agree, hundred percent. Mm. Got no, no argument there. I got, let's. I got Florida. I have Winnipeg in there. Okay. Oh, Winnipeg's good. Don't no, get me I wrong. I'm not at, trying I to say that they're second. bad. I know, I know. I know you're not saying that they're bad and everything, but I think they're the second best team in the league. I think they're better than the Rangers. I think they're up there with the Panthers. Like I think the Panthers have shown us, like even though right now they're at seven three and one at fifteen points. For they were two, missing Barkov for two, and Kachuk. Three, right for two for three weeks they missed Barkov. For a week and a half, two weeks they were missing Kachuk, and they were still winning games. I mean, I was at the yeah. Sabres game Monday when they played Florida. I know it's like it ended up being two two, but like Florida just took control of that game, and I could see why they're so good. Yeah. It's just they're hard, they're hard to Florida's, play against. Florida's depth. Yeah, that once they get once you they start playing their system, you can't get out of it. Like and they and then Bobrovsky will just rob you if he needs to make a big save. Like I, I think Florida is probably the best yeah. team in the league right now. I, I, right That's why now, Florida's like yeah, a hundred percent, dude. That's why Florida's been the favorite heading into last year and probably heading into this year as well. Like if anyone's going to do a back-to-back cup run, it's going to be Florida. Like that they're, they're going to be the team. I mean, that's top six. Now. Is disgusting. Oh, that, oh, that whole lineup is just ridiculous. Now, even like, like he said, even without Barkov, that team looked like the best team in the league. So, and like you could make a case that the jets could be on par with the Rangers. I just personally, I disagree. I think well, the Rangers I, are deeper. Well, I will point out that the Winnipeg Jets right now, they've only played nine games at the moment, but they have 11 guys right now that are sitting at six points. That's a 66-point pace minimum. You have Kyle, by the way, Kyle Connor is playing at an elite level. Same with Mark Shifley. Nikolai Ehlers is looking great. So you go down the list. This team is playing elite hockey, and then Connor Hallibuck, you're getting that Vesna 
caliber self that we saw all of last season with the 2-1-4 goals against the 925 save percentage. Now, I'm not saying they're going to keep this up the entire season, but I'm saying, like, no. sure, the, the Rangers are up there. I have the Panthers in their own tier personally, and then I have the Jets and the um, Rangers neck and neck with each other in that same tier. And let I'm not mad at you guys for saying that the Rangers are better than the Jets because personally I think it, it can flip flop either way. But right now I do think the Winnipeg Jets are the second best team in the NHL and we'll see how I mean, it they might not be the best team in their division. Right now I'm taking Winnipeg over Dallas. And that's coming from somebody that is a Dallas Homer. Oh I uh, forgot about Dallas. No, yeah. no way. No Dallas is better. <laughs> Dallas yeah. is better for sure. Oh, absolutely. Have you seen Dallas's depth? Oh, yeah, their depth is insane. The best and they also have, the they also have an elite league. goalie. They have the they have best better depth, depth in the than the Jets. I think if the Dallas, Jets oh, the start God. play to the playoff series, I think Dallas wins in six. Win, win, Winnipeg is – let me let me think about this. There's Florida, there's the Rangers, there's the Stars. I actually got to look at the list here. Not better. No, no, no. Eh, no. There's three teams better than the Jets right now, personally. And it's, it's, it's the Stars – it's the Panthers. It's the Rangers. Those are the three teams that are better than them right now. I agree. That's sure. valid. I I don't. I I I disagree. But like I said, like I see why. Like I'm no, if we get at, to like the no, summer 100%. and like they still like are playing like this, okay, we can maybe have that conversation again. But right now, you know, I know they got they ought to throw a really hard start. But I just need to see if they, they continue to do this. Yeah, they might be the best team in the league. But right this now, this just seems like an impossible pace to keep. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It, it is an impossible pace at being eight and one and doing that for the entire season. But I will, I will re- remind myself that I literally just thought of it. The last three, four seasons, they've started off hot. And they oh, they're a faltered. great regular they, season team. They, they fall faltered the playoffs. come in February, March, April, and then our first round exits. I think they made it to the Western Conference Finals a few years ago, but outside of that, it's been first round exit, first round and, exit. And that was so, Connor Hellebuck that got him the yeah. Western Conference oh, yeah. Final that year. He was playing out of his mind. I mean, it sucks for Winnipeg because if you get that Connor Hellebuck in the in the playoffs again, like this team could go far. If you get again. that, if you yeah, if you get that Connor Hellebuck in the playoffs, you can make far make it far. But the problem was with the stupid playoff structure. They're playing Dallas in the second round most likely, and. You don't want to play a team like that in the second round. Okay, so here you're, be- you're not beating Dallas in round two. Not I, a chance. You know what is kind of funny, though? So I know Colorado is dealing with a bunch of injuries and everything, and, like, their top – their forward group is decimated. But, listen, I have Minnesota making the playoffs. If Minnesota somehow just sneaks into that third spot or even wild card spot, for example, like, if they match – if Minnesota and Winnipeg match up in the first round – the Jets uh, would decimate give me Jets that in five. In, in five? <laughs> yeah. The I w- Jets would win that in five. And yeah, then 100%. you go on, and then you play Dallas. I That would be a fun series. Now, I would take – Well, it would be a great series, but I don't think the Jets are better than the Stars. In a seven-game series, no way. If, in a seven-game series, I've had the Stars in six. Yeah. Going based off track yeah. record, I I don't – okay, I don't want to be a hypocrite because I would take the Stars in seven games particularly – um, just because of the past, what, three seasons, the Winnipeg Jets have been shit in the playoffs. Um, so I wouldn't really trust them, especially after playing a weak opponent, unless they go out and play Colorado again, and they're the two and three seed for the 25th time. I mean, I think Colorado was a nightmare matchup from last year in the first round. So, because Well, then they're... now you've got Colorado playing Oliver Shillington at fourth line left wing, so I don't know what is going on. I don't know what's going on over there. That team is just... You've got I you've got Ivan Ivan who love that guy. <laughs> Second line left winger though is ridiculous. Like, come on. You look at their lineup and it's like, who's that? Who's this? Who's that? Like, yes, they're all NHL worthy there. They wouldn't be there, but my God, that team is that team is atrocious right now. Yeah, and goaltending hasn't been great either. <laughs> Yogi Yogi have... needs to be sent down now. Brony, that bro... guy is awful. Bro needs to be off the roster tonight. He won't be, obviously, but oh, he needs to be so... gone. Come on, Colorado, man. I don't know, but I think with Colorado, like when like when they're top six forwards, like especially when they're healthy and Nathan McKinnon and Ranton are playing their game, it's it's still hard to beat oh, them. Like... Kale McCarr, like if they're healthy and they're oh, playing that their team, game, that team even is even even with Georgiev, they're hard to beat. Like look what they they obliterated the Jets last year in the playoffs, and with with Georgiev, Georgiev played better than I thought he would be, but they. Their, their depth wasn't that great last year. But like, and it's not that great this year. But you have Nathan McKinnon, you have Kale McCarr, you have Mickey Ratton, and Ma- Casey Middlestat's been really good. And, you know, you're apparently getting Landis Cog back at some point. And if Landis Cog can come back and look like himself, then 
I wouldn't worry too much about the abs once, especially once they start getting healthier. Yeah, uh, but the problem is, are they gonna are they gonna fall off the face of the earth and lose like five, six, seven in a row here with this decimated lineup? Because if they fall to like, for example, for their first twenty games, they go like six and fourteen. All of a sudden, you're panicking. Yeah, I, we'll see. I, I I don't know. I mean, they got to play the games, but I, I'm I mean I'm confident enough in Kale McCarr and Nathan McKinnon to well, like, single handedly put the team yeah, on their back. You They're need yeah. these at least decent goaltending to make saves when you need them to. Like, sure, we've seen Georgi have the past couple seasons. Like this this Colorado team is NHL really All Star Georgia, Excuse you, <laughs> <laughs> but like. You look at every team that was left. <laughs> you look at every team that was left in the second round last season. They all had elite goalies yeah. except one team, and that was Colorado, and they got bounced. I mean, they want to cover Darcy Kemper, yeah. man. Yeah, but like Darcy Kemper was Kemper a better. Was, okay, Kemper was good at that point. He, he was a better goaltender for that than Georgi. I mean, but that that Avs team was also completely stacked, though. <laughs> that Avs team, team went through was, everybody. Was I, they they probably could have won with almost any goalie. Throw one of us in that. Yeah, I don't Stanley know about that chat. one, but <laughs> yeah. you could have thrown David Aries in that and they probably would have won a cup. <laughs> Real shit that. though. <laughs> that dude's a legend. I forgot about that guy. That team was ridiculous. That team was insane. Like I thought the Oilers had a chance and they got swept. That team was just insanely good. Yeah. Okay. I want to play a little game with you guys, okay? We are gonna do don't talk until you hear a better player than. This week. The player is Sebastian Ajo. Let me know when you guys are ready, and then I'll fire off names, and then I'll do I'll fire through ten to twelve names for you guys if that works. Okay. Sure. Sweet. All right. Sick. Sick. Holy shit! Not sick. We're gonna start with Matthew Barzell, Steven Stamkos, Jason Robertson. Charlie McAvoy, Mark Stone, JT, JT Miller, Brady Kachuk, Elias Patterson, Jack Eichel, Kirill Kaprizov. Kaprizov's better than Yep. Okay. 100%. All right. Sick. Honestly, I was kind of surprised. I almost, I was, I almost had something to Eichel, but. I, I, I almost had something to Robertson. Robertson, so I, I, Robertson I was, was another one. Yeah. Robertson, I was wondering if one of you guys were going to say something, but I was like, eh, I mean, that's iffy. It's um, so close. It is so close. It's neck and neck. Yeah. Honestly, at that point, it's just preference. Okay. Yeah. Last thing on the agenda today. We're going to do this or that. Let me explain it to you guys because that really doesn't explain it well. So I'm going to give you guys a choice of two players until we reach Connor McDavid. You guys are going to pick which player you guys think are better. If you, Do you guys want to do a collective list, or do you guys want to do one separate? I think it would be easier if we just did it together. Sick. Okay, sweet. So we're going to start with Josh Morrissey, Charlie McAvoy. Uh, I would probably go with McAvoy. So would I, yeah. Okay. Um, Clayton Keller, Brock Besser. Clayton Keller. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Clayton Keller. I think, you know, Besser's, Besser's a good scorer, but I think Keller is a more complete player. Yeah. That's, yeah, it took me a second, but yeah, probably Keller. Clayton Keller, Rope Hints. That's a Hintz. tough one. Uh, probably Rope Hints. I'll be honest with you. Like, that is so, that is close, but yeah. It's, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go I'll with Probably going Hints yeah. there. Yeah. Hints or Connor Bedard? Bedard. Okay. Bedard, Adam Fox? Adam Fox. I, I, I mean, I guess because Adam Fox is a pro, he's a Norris winning defenseman, and Bedard hasn't played that much yet. So. Fox or Hedman? Fox. Fox. Fox or Heiskanen? Fox. Fox. Fox or Yossi? Fox. Fox. Fox or Makar? Makar. Makar or McKinnon? Makar. I think Makar is Makar. the best defenseman in the league. Makar. Yeah. Down. Makar or Kucherov? Makar. Right He's now? Yeah. Right now? Makar. I, yeah. I, I have to go with Makar, yeah. Makar yeah. or Connor McDavid? 
I mean, right now, <laughs> right, Makar. Yeah. Right now? <laughs> yeah. Right now, it's, Makar. It's Makar. It's Makar. All time, you're going McDavid. Right now, you're going McCarr. I mean, Makar might win MVP this year. Dude, Makar's playing lights out. Lights There's out. only two players Dude, in the league Makar that have two points, more, more, more points than him. Kaprizov and Stone, and Makar is a defenseman. Makar, yeah, right now, been, in my opinion, is a lock for the insane. Norris. I'm not saying he's a lock for the heart because my boy Kaprizov, who is my preseason pick, is balling the fuck out. So I can't, I can't go oh, back. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think Makar should be the favorite to win the Norris every year until proven otherwise. Oh, by far. By far. He should uh, be the best his to lose. It's his to lose every year. It's his, literally his to lose every year. Not only he, like, he, I Eric, think he could put up 100 Eric points Carlson's as a putting up 102 points is, like Eric Carlson putting up 102 points is the only reason that Makar doesn't win that, but. Yeah, I mean, it's McCarr can, like, can, McCarr can put up 100-plus points, and he can still play really good defense. And then like, the, he's different. The year oh, that Yossi won it a few years back, I'm pretty sure Yossi was in the 90-point range. So then he also got it for that he, reason. He, I was going to say, I think he hit 95. Mm-hmm. He plays more defense than Carlson. Oh, by far. <laughs> Everybody plays more defense than Carlson. <laughs> that was cr- I still I mean I get you had to give it to him because he had a hundred points like as a defenseman, which is crazy. But that team was dog shit, and he was that whole offense for the Sharks that year. I mean, yeah. personally, what I think happens with that is if Crosby doesn't go to at the time it was um oh my god, who's their GM before Dubis? I think Dubis is the one that made the good trade, question. Though. Was Dubis the one that made the trade? I think Jim Rutherford. No, was, I know what he's talking he the about. GM? You're. Who? No, brother. No, it wasn't Rutherford. They fired him. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't remember who the GM was in Pittsburgh. I'm going was to. It, was it? Oh, it was fucking uh, Ron, Ron Hextall. Yes. Was it Ron Hextall? Was he the yeah. one that made the trade, or was it? Dubis? No, I think Dubis did. I, I think I Dubis made the first, trade, but I think was, I think Hextall was the one that was going to let Malkin walk. Okay. Yeah. He was going to let Latang walk too. Yeah, that is also true. Because I think the first thing I think the first thing Dubis did when he came in was he signed with Latang. And then he got he was he got Malkin locked up too, right? Yeah. And then, and then he traded he signed for Crosby. Crosby to the extension too, so yeah. So I mean yeah. they had well, that the Crosby extension home. was a given. Yeah. Dude, Crosby's eight point seven. He's so <laughs> he, you're lucky he's a fucking weirdo about numbers. <laughs> he could have went in there and be like, that guy could that guy could that guy could walk in there with a blank check, and they'd be like, yeah, sure, what do you want? Like, yeah, I get he's no, thirty seven, but he's con- he's fucking Sidney Crosby. You Dude. can pay him whatever he wants. Be, I when it was coming up before they even talked, I'm sure Dubis was expecting something bigger. Probably, like I think I think Dubis is smart enough to be like, okay, he's only ever accepted eight point seven, but is it disrespectful for me to go in at eight point seven, or do I just wait? Oh yeah, points? I think yeah. you definitely start with a higher offer. Of course, you don't want to be rude. Like you don't apparently, potentially the, piss him off. I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently the Penguins offered him higher than eight point seven. Is that true? Does anybody know? Obvi- yeah. So, oh, like, yeah, they would Friedman, have to. Friedman said Friedman was the one who said that there was like six different. Like when Dubas went and said we want to extend you, obviously, he put like four different offers on the table, and there was like the two by eight point seven, which he signed. There was like a one by twelve point five, and then there was like a three by three by ten, and like a four by nine point seven five, something along those lines. He's like, here's the offer where you might sign it like if you want to sign for just that amount of money it's two years if you want one year we'll give you almost 13 as the years go up we go less money just choose the contract you want essentially so i probably i, probably, I think I mean, if he was about the money i probably would have took that three or 10 million but yeah but i think the 8.7 is just something that he needs to do all the time which i respect so, it like but it's also like i get he, he wants to win another cup before he retires and that gives the team a little bit more flexibility to spend money other places on the roster so it's very team friendly and then you're paying was winning a cup before years, he retires. So. i know i'm just saying though you that technically you, gotta, you can make that argument the only that way the only way he wins another cup is if he gets traded listen and i don't know who he's gonna uh, trade to but Crosby? i want him to play with with nathan mckinnon so badly it was funny, too, up. because in the offseason before he signed the extension, it was all, oh, Crosby, Colorado, play with McKinnon, play with this and that and everything. And then it got shot down. It's like, now we can shut up about him getting traded to Colorado because it's not happening. I mean, was that actually a rumor? Because I, I brought that up just for fun in one of our recordings. Oh, oh there was, there was oh, an yeah. actual rumor. There was genuine, like, okay, you're, he's going to Colorado for, I think the original thing was, like, Cal Ritchie and three firsts plus, like, a – NHL ready player, I think, is what the mock trade was or whatever. But yeah, it, it oh, was there was Steve there was Nathan genuine Crosby to play together would be amazing. You're not beating that team. 
respectfully. No. Even if, if even with if the Avalanche are good, you're not beating. Oh that my team. god, that power play might be a, at a fifty percent rate. Genuinely, you got freaking yeah. ransom. They're not gonna. They're not gonna McKinnon, lose. Crosby, McCarr. They don't need to Oof. play defense. No, you don't. Although Cal McCarr Just, plays some pretty good defense, so he does. Yeah, McCarr can do everything. I mean, McCarr can do whatever he wanted. Like that guy literally runs the show. Like I can do whatever he wants. What year was he drafted? Was it 2019? For what? I what think you, it was what year eight, was McCarr drafted? Was it, was it 2019 or 2018? I think it was 18. I think it was 2018. Gotta look now. I think it was 2018. It was 2017. Whoa. Oh, oh yeah. 18 was Darlene. Yeah. Yeah. And McCarr went fourth. Yeah, I think if they redraft, he probably goes number one. Who is? Hold on. I want to take this a, a good draft that. class. Nico Heischer, Miro Heiskinen, Elias Pettersson, Martin Natchez, Gabe Velarde, uh, Rob Thomas, uh, Eli Tolvanen. Yeah. Jason Robertson's here too. Robert Thomas, Jake Ottinger. Mikey Anderson's here too. Drake Batherson's here too. Defenseman yeah. Sebastian Ajo, because he needs his respect. <laughs> this draft I mean, was feel, genuinely good. Yeah. I feel like Nolan Patrick could have been good if he could he could have stayed healthy. He had all the talent in the world. I feel bad. Yeah, he did. Genuinely. Yeah, he did. Nah, I feel, dude I do feel bad for that dude guy. Stay healthy. He, yeah, he was. Well, my boy Clem got picked 31st. I forgot about that. I mean... Nolan Patrick in his draft year had, well, in 15 16, he had 102 and 72 with the Wee Kings. And then 16 17 in his draft year as the captain, he had 46 and 33 games. I remember there was a pretty substantial debate going into that draft about who's going to be the first pick. Was it going to be Patrick or Heischer? Now, obviously, the Devils. There was a huge debate. The yeah. Devil made the right call. It was kind of like, it reminded me like Taylor Hall, Tyler Sagan. Like, I remember. The debate for that draft was crazy about who the, the uh, who who was gonna, Edmonton was going to take first overall. I'd like to I'd like to just point out three minutes into the game, it's two nothing Tampa over Colorado right now. Damn, <laughs> dude! <laughs> can can, can, can McCarr oh, play man. goalie? <laughs> you know what they listen? Okay, you know what they should. I, think I don't even I don't even think it's your given net. I think it's Capo Kakin in the net tonight too. I think he's the one. Yeah, Capo Kakin. He's got a three point three three save percentage with a forty point oh goals against. Preston, this sounds like I, 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 I might need to pull him. Preston, when I uh, posted the thing about who we're more worried about, the Predators of Colorado, I swear to God, some Colorado Avalanche fan goes in. Well, we have Capo Kakin coming in, so we should be okay. <laughs> I just, I was crying. I mean, is it really? I mean, but when you two should be him and him and Georgiev, I mean, I mean, no honestly, there's what, no difference but... to be honest. With Neither <laughs> David Aries. <laughs> yeah, you get Kel the same bony drive on the ice. Play. He needs to go play forward, mm. D man, and goaltender, and then they might have a shot. Genuinely, I, I mean, I'm surprised they didn't try to address goaltending in like in the off season at all because I can't imagine. Well, I, I don't know how Colorado. Come- you had to. You had to assume Georgiev was going to play well. They also had like no cap That's space a big either assumption. too. It is a big assumption, but like I mean, the Capitals went and attacked and made their goaltending better, and they had Charlie Lindgren, who I will stand by, was one of the best goalies in the league last year. Oh, oh right. yeah, he's but, yeah, the yeah, only yeah. reason. Like, and they went and they went and grabbed. They traded Kemper away and went and grabbed Logan Thompson. So they I love Logan Thompson. Dude, I think but, he's a very underrated goalie. Fantastic. Yeah. Speaking of that trade, PLD is not playing too bad in Washington right now. No, Dubois looks Washington's, good. He looks Washington's, good. Washington's been a very pleasant surprise. I mean, they made a ton of moves in the offseason, though. Like, a ton of moves. Yeah, they might win another cup. I'm not sure. That uh, fun, but, <laughs> I love yeah. that. You know, Ovi, Ovi scored two goals last last night. Preston Cook. called it on, Sunday, on Sunday's episode that Ovi would get two goals this week. He got them both in the same game. doesn't matter, though. It's the same. It's the same. Week. Ovi's breaking that record. It's going to happen. He is going to. Eventually, oh, he's going to. It, one way or the other, it's going to happen. He might hit 900. I'm not sure, but he will. I can't. I can't I'm, I'm, I'm imagining, record. like, once he gets around that, like, mark, I have a feeling they're going to try to nationally televise every single Capitals game until he breaks that. Cause Dude. TV are, Network's going to sure. want that moment, like, broadcasted on their network. I can't imagine yep. a ticket price. Prices for each game leading up to it. Can't as soon as he hits like, because what is it, eight ninety four is the yeah. record. So once he gets like eight ninety, 
then every game, and I know it's like a four goal game is close to impossible, but it's not out of the realm of amazing if that's how we did it. But that's what I mean, though, right? Is because, say, for example, like once he hits like 890, every game until he actually gets that record is going to be like, oh, maybe he maybe he goes off for a hat trick tonight. Maybe he gets four. Maybe he gets five. Um, (laughs) Every game price is going to. I have a feeling once he gets in like striking distance, Obi's going to start trying a lot harder. Dude, every goal. Or they're just going to put him out for a lot of empty net goals. Every goal he gets now, he's like. Like uh, la- what was it? Last night they played. Yeah, last night he played when he got the two goals. Dude was actually amped up to get goals. I'm like, this is what we want to see. Like he's not like I, I know we see. Yeah, that's why he's playing right, right. now. Is to break Gretzky's record. I think I mean, that he would be done if he wasn't trying to break the record. I mean, but this team is probably. I-, I think Washington, in all likelihood, is probably a playoff team. Oh this year, yes, so. thank you, thank you, thank you. I know it's only ten games in. I have told people three nothing Tampa. There it is. Oh is it what five minutes into the <laughs> did first? They, did they pull a Kakin in yet? Uh, let's see. No, Kakin stays in. Okay, he's got to go after. <laughs> What's the one. hell? He's got to go after this. <laughs> That's one. crazy. How many shots does Tampa have? Like four. Uh, Kakin has allowed two on five. Dude, it is five minutes on five. into the three on five. game. <laughs> you let Connor Geeky score. Come on now. No disrespect to him because he's not NHL. But like, but it's still Connor Geeky, and he's kind of like, nah. that, that's true. <laughs> I mean, in, in Kapanen's defense, he had Kucherov and Gensel scored the first two. Well, still, dude, two, three goals on five shots. Listen, we don't know the con- I'm not defending this play, but we don't know the context between the first two. Second, third goal, unexcusable. First two, it could have been both easy dunks for all we know. I don't know. I mean, the team in front of him is well, kind of ass anyways right now. The first goal was Kucherov. The second goal was Gensel. So either way, it was probably going in. And not, as I say this, the NHL is tweeting about Kucherov making an incredible pass and having an incredible goal. So I'm. <laughs> so it's, it's still it's still it, it's still Capo Kakinen, but I mean okay, it least... is also Nikita Kucherov playing hockey. So. <laughs> this is I'm good. not even kidding. Nikita Kucherov, what a feed, fooling everyone. And then Nikita Kucherov, what a goal. Point to Kucherov, the duo keeps rolling. So okay, see it's just amusing at this point. Like I, I feel bad. I do. I'm watching the second goal right now. I, I don't even know. I. This oh, oh, so oh, oh, that's oh, oh, was that it, pass was is it, disgusting. Was it? All, it, it was, was all behind the, the net. Watch behind the net, no look, backhand pass, a fucking tapping goal. I gotta look at this now. Oh my god! Oh, that god. was disgusting. No, no goalie stopping that one. That's not on the goalie. Nikita Kucherov's playing like he wants to win another Stanley Cup. Oh my god! Okay, nobody was stopping that. You're yeah. right. Oh my god! Yeah, no, no one stopping oh that. Oh my one. goodness! Wow. That's Kucherov crazy. is just so nasty. Like he, he, everybody, even even everybody on the other team knew that he, or thought that he kept the puck nobody even on his team knew he passed that right away okay and the first one he scored was like a laser beam from the slot shocker so listen i told you guys captain had a shot on he had a, he had a shot on that one that second one no goal he's stopping that one so i mean i guess allowed two goals technically the first one nobody's stopping so oh well uh it's gonna be about a seven nothing game Probably. Right, In other news, the, the Yankees are now winning 5 nothing. Are you fucking serious? Dude? Yankees in 7, book it. God, I hate the Yankees. <laughs> Yankees in 7. Yankees in 7. What the fuck? Twitter has gambling odds now on the fucking sports feeds? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like That's alive. Oh God, Dodgers and Yankees, live line, odds. Though. Wait, where do you Yankees find money line. Yankees money line is minus 10,000 right now. Make your bets. Wait, 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 wait. No, because if I bet on that, they'll end up losing. Oh, so, man. But if they win, you'll win, like, 50 cents, dude. Dude, I swear hmm, to God, you know if the Dodgers blow money. this and allow the Yankees to come back 3-0 and win the World Series, you would guys be might... the best thing that's ever happened. It's going to be the worst thing to happen <laughs> since the Great oh, Depression. Man. Go Yankees, brother. I don't I know. There's been a lot worse things that's happened between okay, listen. now and the Great Depression, man. <laughs> <laughs> The worst thing is because of pressure. Like, you got a pretty low bar for bad things, man. You're right. You're right. Sorry. World War II happened. Um, the Cold War. I can think of a couple too. other really, really bad things. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna say it. On. I get. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I mean, good for you if you think that's the worst thing that's happened in the last like hundred years, but. 
there was like a there was a couple things that happened that you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, personally, the worst for me way. is like seeing Jack Eichel raise the Stanley Cup. That's my that's my nine. I was right happy there, for so. him. I was happy for him. I, I really, I'm just fucking. I don't really care that he won the Dude, cup. Dude, does Chris still hate him with the passion? We don't really talk about him. Why that's... would we talk about him? He doesn't play for us anymore. Who cares? Yeah, he's playing at <laughs> an elite level. <laughs> All right. All right, I have to take off here, fellas. That works Good for us. Thank guys. you for joining us on yeah. tonight's episode. We yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. And yeah, by thanks, the way. Fellas. All you listeners, viewers, whatever you guys stayed for the entire episode, go check them out on Instagram, The Mug, NHL. Are you posting on YouTube at all, at all, or no? Uh, I've started to, yeah, at The Mug TV. Absolutely, okay. I have. All right, sweet. Go check them out, guys. Subscribe, notification bell down below. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys in our next episode.